All right, today we're going to be talking about ethnic media and the state of it right here in New York City. So we thought we'd bring you some numbers to bring the picture a little bit into focus. Slide number one. We're looking at ethnic media in New York. Now, there are nearly 200 media outlets across the digital, TV, print, and, of course, radio as well, doing ethnic media. There is 30 languages in New York City that they cover. In fact, about one in six New York homes is proficient in a language other than English. And altogether, those outlets have a combined circulation of about 4.5 million folks. We also happen to be blessed with the uh, nation's oldest non-English uh, media. That happens to be El Diario, founded in 1913. Our neighbors just down the block a little way. Moving on, the challenges faced by ethnic media in this media landscape. Here's a little number. In 2013 to 15, those fiscal years, 37 ethnic media outlets received ad funding from New York City. And that was a budget of about $20 million. Of that $20 million, those outlets received about $2.5 million. Not a big number, especially when you think that the rest of that budget went to the big boys, like the New York Times, the Daily News, and the Post. So just a little context for you. There's a lot of non-English speaking folks who have proficiency in other languages who depend on ethnic media to bring them news of home and here in a language and culture they understand. And those outlets are shrinking. Aaron? Last week, a hearing at the city council moved to address some of the concerns of the ethnic and community press. To tell us more, here are Isu Juf Campbell, founder of African Spot, a bilingual digital outlet focusing on the African diaspora living in the New York area. Welcome to BK Live. Thank and you for online me. journalist Gustavo Martinez Contreras, formerly a senior reporter for El Diario who has written extensively about the challenges facing ethnic media outlets. And thank you so much for being here as well. Thank you for having me. Okay, so to begin the discussion, uh, Isu, can you define for us what is ethnic media and what are the parameters for a publication or blog to be uh, considered ethnic? Okay, um, we at AfricanSpot.com, we focus on the African diaspora. The African diaspora is uh, you have continental Africans migrating here to, to New York, and you also have African Americans. You also have the West Indians, and you also have the Afro, we call the Afro-black. Those are the, um, the blacks coming from Europe. So that's, that's our target market. But uh, if you want to talk about the ethnic media, it's usually um, immigrant communities come in here and that are targeted by their um, fellow citizens who are not necessarily speaking English. For instance, we, we, we are bilingual, so we have English and French, because why we didn't do just French is because we think that when you move into a country, it's important to also learn the language. So we want to try to help them uh, transition. It's not easy, because when you come and you uh, speak uh, a different language, it's often difficult to come in and just, you know, get into the system and understand how everything is 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 working. So, Gustavo, uh, recently, El Diario, an outlet you used to work for, fired like half of its staff. Are we at crisis proportions just in that newsroom, or do you think the entire landscape of ethnic media is really reaching the red zone? I think the entire landscape, I mean, it's very critical. I mean, you showed numbers on how much uh, ad, uh, money went to these outlets. Mm -hmm. That Noting that El Diario is one of the top four uh, publications that receive ad money from the city. Right. Um, so it's kind of a difficult or, or quite a peculiar situation for El Diario, but it shows, it's telling of what all the ethnic media or the community newspapers are going through. Okay. Now, when you talk about that ad revenue, what are the other main sources of income for these digital platforms and publications? I mean, I would think it's revenue from other, uh, other, other revenue, but not necessarily from the city, from, from people who want to advertise in, in certain publications. Um, it's depending on, on your audience. 
uh, who's going to be willing to put a, an ad there, and also you have to show numbers and, 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 and numbers and, and stuff like that, just to to prove that you can uh, that they that whoever wants to advertise with you will get uh, their, their money back, their money's worth in, in putting their money with you. So when we look at this landscape, though, we see that the New York Times is one of the leaders in trying to monetize their website and get people clicking through, but also making money without killing the newspaper business, and newspapers and print are shrinking. So everybody's having a sort of tough time in the media. How does that trickle down to the ethnic media? I think that with the crisis, it becomes clear mm -hmm. that uh, ethnic media is struggling. I think that before, when everything was fine, um, people didn't really pay attention to it. But when we talk, when we start saying El Diario, and we just like, really? So what about the, the smaller ones? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the fact that, that, and I was saying it last, last week, um, we had to get to the point where El Diario was in trouble for when the some of the granddaddy of them all is in trouble. The, to, to realize and say, wait a minute, let's look at the, the others. If El Diario is in trouble, yeah. what about the smaller one? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I have the feeling that because these bigger outlets are having troubles, it, it gives us um, a little more, how can I say it? People, people can start see, to pay attention, yeah, pay attention yeah. and really say, okay, maybe we should help them or yeah. do something about this. You know, I have to ask, there's so many different media outlets here in New York City. So what are your thoughts on, um, I guess, the hearing last week where, you know, the mayor and the city council uh, announced plans to launch uh, the website that will sort of coalesce all of the platforms so that people can, can be aware? You know, why wasn't this done earlier? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on that as well? You know, as I said, there were countless meetings and roundtables about the ethnic media. And the, the problem has have been the same, lack of advertisement coming from the city. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how much the city is spending, uh, it, two years ago it was 18 million, now it's 20 million. So it's growing. But we, we, when you look at the report from the controller's office, you see that those numbers are increasing. But in the top 40, uh, for instance, of publications uh, that receive ad money, there is no African media. Mm -hmm. And we, you have uh, publications like the African Sun Times, for instance, they've been publishing for more than 30 years. So you, you, you can't say that you cannot brag about the diversity mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the city, New York City, and when it comes to reaching out those those communities, when money is involved, at least there is no one. Because in times of crisis, for instance, the Ebola crisis last year, they had no problem finding us. I, I have one of my colleagues saying, you know, uh, staff from the city came and dropped flyers and information mm -hmm. and everything. So you realize that when there is no money involved, they have no problem finding us. Mm -hmm. But when money is involved, it's true that it goes through yeah. uh, city um, um, advertising agencies. But if the, um, the government agencies are really, if they really wanna, want us to receive that money, yeah. I think they will make an effort. Is there any concern effort. between the both of you that we might get on a slippery slope here? Because if a publication can't afford to stay afloat and keep the lights on without the city government stepping in and buying ads or giving them an infusion of money, are we a breath away from state-sponsored news? Like, in this free market economy, if you can't keep your lights on without the government breaking you off some cash for ads, then... I think it's a, I think it's a valid concern. I think it's something that should be raised and, and questioned. Um, but at the same time, we have to see uh, the news or, or our communities as as disenfranchised in terms of information. Mm -hmm. The New York Times, the Post, the the the. Um, the Daily News, they don't cater to our people. They don't speak our language. Mm -hmm. Well, the New York Times just today launched a Spanish website. But that's a part. That's different. Um, the, the, we have to think uh, as, as this news, as this information, as public information, as something that needs to be uh, available for the people, whatever language they speak. So uh, there has to be some sort of uh, commitment from the government mm -hmm. to help spread this information, this news, through the outlets, through whatever mechanisms, but always bearing in mind that they, ha they cannot uh, meddle with the media. They cannot become, or as you said, state-sponsored media. 
and, and the, the other aspect of it is that immigrant communities coming from other parts of the world, things are working differently in mm -hmm. those parts of the world. So you, you want to make sure that those people coming in are aware of, Learning you know, all the, all the mechanism all the and yeah. all the opportunities that are available here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but to come back to your question, uh, mainly uh, ethnic media, we get ads from the small businesses, mm -hmm. right? With the crisis, some of them also have been struggling, so they cut the budget. So it's not really uh, saying that we, we are counting uh, on that money to exist, but this money is already here, mm -hmm. and this money is spent every fiscal year. It's not like something that they creating just for the ethnic media. What we want is just have a fair share. So instead of giving 80% mm -hmm. to the big publications, maybe give them a little bit less and give us a, a little bit more. So that can help us hire people mm -hmm. because as you know, and maybe sometimes people understand that outlets are businesses like any other businesses. Right. And I say we are the mom and pops of the media industry. So despite the fact that we want to inform and empower our community, we still remain a business and there are certain rules that are valid for us too. So if we are not able to, to pay the staff right. to be able to do the work, it won't be done. So. So what happens if ethnic media goes away in New York City, if El Diario shrinks, if the Africa, uh, African, spot? African if, the, if these things go away? I think that the city will lose its biggest ally when it comes to reaching out to local communities because, as he said, we speak the language, mm -hmm. we understand the culture, and we live with our community. So we know them better than the, the, the average or the new, somebody who was born and raised in New York City and live in his or her community. Yeah. So, Gustavo, what steps in to fill the void then? Is it enough that we've got Twitter or Facebook once we lose a media outlet? It's interesting that you say that, because, I mean, also, I think also part of, at least for, in terms of El Diario, um, they didn't keep up with their audience. I mean, they had a huge, a huge advantage over mostly everybody else because they had this growing number of population in, the, in not only in, in New York but in the country, right? Yeah. Latinos are ri a number record. rising, yeah. uh, but they're also changing community. Um, they're more bilingual, and then they tend to uh, be more assimilated, for lack of a better word, and I hate that word. But um, <laughs> they 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 miss the opportunity. They remain catering to. The Spanish speakers that were just decreasing uh, in, in the city uh, in, in in general, you know, so they, they didn't adapt to the times as well. So that's also something that it needs to be taken a look on. Uh, it's not just that we're missing something that struggled to survive; they just didn't adapt to the times at, at the same time. So uh, it, it's also uh, there. There are also outlets that came out out of to cover that necessity, that need. It's not only news that we need, we need entertainment, we need all this stuff, and, and the Diario wasn't providing that anymore, wasn't talking uh, uh, in relevant terms to, to that community in New York. They were talking, still talking about our countries, and that's very valid because we still have roots in our countries, but what's happening here to us? Mm -hmm. And now with, with less reporters, they don't have anybody to cover what's happening here as well. So it's, it's losing touch with your community as well. That's a big problem. Okay. Thing. And we have about 60 seconds left, so I'll give you the last word. What is African Spot doing to, to reach out to those people as well? To reach out to our community mm -hmm. or to the... Um, well, uh, what we've done, we've tried to organize in the African community by putting up a network, African Publishers and Broadcasters Network, to make it easier for city agencies to find us. Because the main issue is they say, oh, we don't know where they are. So now we're saying we are here, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be reaching out to you, and you also have the Center for Ethnic and Community Media. All right. Well, thank you so much. We do appreciate you guys for coming out, and ethnic media lives.